Well, hello and welcome. I am so thrilled to be doing this live video with you beautiful, beautiful gentlemen. So I am just want to say a big fat thank you. Thank you. Excuse me as I itch my nose for you guys helping us get to 35,000 plus of a community. So it's, I think it's at 36,000 now. So thank you guys so much. If you were here, tell me where you are from, what part of the world I want to see in the chat box on the side. Where are you from? Hola, Alex Vasquez. Hello, my dear. Welcome. Welcome. I am just so excited because I feel like with these lives, we get to connect and it's awesome. You're in California, distractions in DC, Augusta, Georgia, Philadelphia. Welcome Harvey, Bart, distraction, Alex, Antoine's in DC, Chicago bum, bum, is in the house. Pittsburgh is in the house. Wow. This is so cool. North Carolina, anyone from out of the country here? Hello, Mashu, Louisiana. Hi, Kim, you're here. My fellow sister from another mister. Charles from Texas, Houston, Adam. Do you guys know I'm from Texas originally? I am from Galveston, Texas. Adam's from Boston. Kim, you're in Orlando, Albany, Georgia. Anthony's in Florida, Jacksonville. Going to the gym, Cody. Get it, sexy buff. Houston, but in Paraguay, awesome. Oh my God, so, so, so thrilled. Matt from New Jersey. You guys, thank you so much. Dubai, we have someone from out of the country. Awesome. Orlando, love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you guys so much for being here. And yes, so freaking cool. Bahamas, please send me your WhatsApp number. Ooh, you get in person, boy. Okay. Callie, I'm in Los Angeles. Hey, Pete. Hey, Illinois, Paul. Galveston, Texas. Carl, are you really from Galveston? Carl, are you seriously? Because I'm from Galveston. Uh, Jersey, I love watching you. Thank you. From Sanford, UK. I've lived in the UK. I lived in Cheltenham. Joe's from Houston. H Town. I'm coming down. Actually, I am coming to Houston. I'm doing lots of traveling. Um, so you guys, thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Seriously, 35,000. Wow. I am just so honored to be able to serve your heart. I'm sorry, Carl from Tiki Island. Shut the front door. You really are from Galveston. Yeah, I'm from Carl. My family still lives in Galveston. Hi, Jesse. Um, you guys, it's an honor to be able to serve your hearts and have this community. I don't take it lightly. And it is just a really big deal to be able to serve you guys in this capacity and, and to connect with you in this live format. Every time I do these live videos, I just get so much energy. I can just feel your excitement. I can hear anticipation. I guess that is the empath in me, but I can definitely and I'm just so thrilled. And so this is an AMA, which is an ask me anything, if you're not familiar with that term. And I wanted to give this to you guys because, you know, sometimes I get, I get comments or you guys email me and it's a little bit different though, when I can answer it in a live format, because it's like, we're sitting together and having a conversation. Abu said, uh, I'm a really big fan of yours. Oh, thank you so much, my love. And someone just left me a really naughty comment, but Facebook, I mean, Facebook, YouTube just blocked it. So guys, you had sent in the community, uh, you had sent to me some questions. And if you're not a part of that community, um, I highly suggest that you join us in there because, you know, it's, it's just another beautiful place for us all to, to connect. Um, so we're going to go at this and one thing, at one of the questions that you guys asked is um, about sex. And a guy asked, he said, you know, how do I get a woman to enjoy sex who's not really into it? And we, we tend to talk a lot about sex videos here. My, my sex videos seem to do very, very well, which is why I keep making them because you guys seem to like them. 
Um, and sex is a beautiful thing. I really think that sex is a way of connecting to ourselves and, and connecting with one another. And I know it's been demonized by lots of people, but it really is a beautiful thing if you make it that way. <laughs> Someone just wrote, I like sex. I'm actually going to show your comment because that's awesome. <laughs> um, so let's talk about this. This guy's like, this woman doesn't want to have sex. She's, she's Catholic. She's just, and she's, she's just not enjoying it. You know what? This is just my take, but I believe that society has really made it out to where men love sex and women, like we're these delicate flowers that we just, you know, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And I just think it's horseshit. I think that sex is something that women really do love. And there are just some women who are very disconnected back, they're disconnected from their bodies. And so if you're with a woman and she doesn't enjoy sex, the first thing that you wanna do is empower her with sex for herself by meaning pleasuring herself, whether it's using a vibrator, something I, I would highly suggest if a woman's really shut down with sex, that you introduce her to getting her own vibrator, not to do in front of you because that's a bit uh, too aggressive, but something that she can practice on her own. A vibrator, if a woman's having a difficult time um, disconnecting from her body, when she uses a vibrator, it's in full force. Um, once that thing hits a woman's clitoris, it kind of takes over. And the beauty of vibrators is it gets a woman out of her mind and really into her body very fast because they can be very intense if you get the right ones. And I've even thought about, I thought about doing a video about vibrators because I do believe in them and I think that they're wonderful. So if a woman is not having, if she's not enjoying sex, she's not comfortable with sex, chances are she is not enjoying her body. And if she's not enjoying her body, then you want to empower her by getting her a vibrator and helping her enjoy that for herself first and foremost. Because I am of the mindset that you can never really give away what you don't have. And that can mean in terms of love, empowerment, there are so many aspects where this really, you know, transpires. But especially with sex, if a woman is not enjoying herself sexually by herself, chances are she's not going to be able to do that with you. So I highly encourage you, get her a vibrator and empower her so that she can enjoy sex for herself. And then from there, then, then you get to experiment with her. I will tell you a, per, a funny personal story because I, I really don't like when people give advice and they're all like so professional and it's like, let me tell you what to do. I am above this, but you little peons follow my advice and I will direct you. I think that's horseshit. I think that people relate to people and we relate to one another through stories and through personal experiences. That's how we grow. So I'm not one of these coaches that's just going to talk at you. But uh, if I'm not sharing my story with you, then why would you share your story with me? I'll get off that soapbox. So I had a friend tell me about this amazing vibrator. And I was like, Mm, and I was very, I grew up in a very strict Christian home, which you don't have sex before you get married and, but everyone does. So then they hurry up and get married to have sex. It's just, a, it's just a big mess. Uh, but they will, anyways, that's another story. And so I'm like, I don't know about sex and all this stuff. And, and so she, she goes, you got to get this particular vibrator. And I think it's discontinued now. So I'm like, okay. And so she starts laughing at me. She tells me to watch this movie called The Big O in Ohio, which is an old school uh, show or movie. And it was freaking hilarious. And so she says, I want you to watch this. And it's about this woman who never has had an orgasm. And so then she gets a hold of a vibrator. And as you can imagine, guess what happens? And so my girlfriend, her and her boyfriend, uh, we were roommates. And, and this is when I first moved to LA, like a back, well, I'm not going to tell you when, but a long time ago. And uh, she, she says, okay, Erica, me and her boyfriend, we're going to leave. 
and you and your friend just enjoy yourself. Now, I had had a date scheduled that night, and I was meeting a guy for drinks, and so I enjoyed this this uh, vibrator, and I ended up having like six orgasms because you know that's the beauty of a woman. While we may get screwed over with periods, we are blessed in the terms in terms of having lots and lots of orgasms, which is. <sighs> I'm very grateful for, and I think it's amazing. Thank you, God. And so, uh, so I have these six orgasms from this vibrator, and I, uh, I, I then go on my date, and I tell this guy, I'm like beaming. I'm like, holy shit! It's like I was like, like Jasmine in Aladdin. I was like, a whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. I was in heaven. And so I go on this date with this guy and I'm like, oh my God, I just have to tell you, I just got a new vibrator and I just had six orgasms by myself and it was amazing. And the guy's looking at me like, I can't believe this woman is telling me she just masturbated and that she had six orgasms and now she's telling me this. Of course, what does he do? He's like, oh, well, we can go back to your place and da 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 And I was like, nah, playa, I'm good. No, 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 it's not that easy. So what I'm saying is that when a woman thoroughly enjoys herself sexually, that's going to come out in her, in her relationships, how she's interacting with the man that she's involved in. So if a woman is shy, if she is shut down, you want to empower her to find and discover her sexuality on her own with the help of a vibrator. So does that help? I hope that helps somebody out there. For those who are with shy women who their sexuality has been repressed and they still think that if they have sex that they're a slut and all this other stuff that society has done to shut women down, um, I would highly encourage you, empower her, find a beautiful vibrator for her and say, listen, I want you to feel powerful over you. I want you to feel comfortable in your body. I want you to enjoy your body because guess what? It's yours. So one guy said, it makes me a tad insecure. She can pleasure herself that well. Like, can I match up to that? Adam, that's such a great thing that you just brought up. And I'm, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you for bringing that up. And I hear that from men. Like if, if this woman can pleasure herself with these toys what does she need me from? And I'm going to say this in a very crude way. And I probably, if you've been watching my channel, I don't even need to preface it, my crudeness, because it's always crude and it's always, and it's always brash. So it is what it is. Um, I always say this, a dildo is a piece of plastic and it may have these mechanisms to make a woman come, but a dildo, I've always said this, a dildo will never replace a warm, throbbing penis. Never, ever, 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 ever will a vibrator replace a man. Think about it. We human beings are made for connection. And so, yes, while that may help a woman connect back to herself and connect back to her body, a woman is still going to want to connect with a man. So when you put your warm, strong body that's smooth or rough and you place it, smell your pheromones and the way that you touch her, listen, that cannot replace some plastic thing that's going, eh. those things are wonderful, but they are not the, they are not the end all be all. Someone just asked me, why are you against porn? I never said I was against porn, by the way. I just made a video with someone about when people get addicted to porn. So those are very two different distinctions. And oh, I love what the Duke of Norfolk said. Thank you so much. Comments always, they get to me. So thank you. You're right. A dildo cannot kiss her on the lips while it's vibrating. So it will never, ever, ever replace it. And I love, it's more important to have that physical connection. It's so true, Kim. Kim is my girlfriend up on this channel. Kim is always chiming in and, 
and saying like, this is what us women want. And I'm so grateful to have you a part of this. And it's so true. Like that physical connection with another human being, nothing can replace that. So guys, if you ever get worried about, oh, she's, she's masturbating and she's coming on her own and she doesn't need me, bullshit. We will always need you men. How could you ever be replaced? You can never, ever replace a man. Oh, I love men. I love men so much. It's why I do what I do so that you guys know that you're loved and that not all women are out to get you, that there are women out here like myself and Kim who freaking love you guys and who are not trying to me to you and, and trying to destroy you and tell you that you're a, a piece of shit, but there are women out there that freaking love your socks off. I love you for your courage. I love you for your tenacity. I love you for your open heart. I love you for your masculinity. I love you for your strength. I love you men. And if you've not heard that today, then baby doll, let me tell you right now that right where you are, that you are loved that you are valuable, that you cannot be replaced, that you are significant, and that there is not another like you. So we need you. We need you. And we love you, men. And we celebrate you, men. I wish I had a room full of ladies right now where we could just all clap and be like, can we just stop and give it up for men? Thank you for being your sexy asses. Thank you. Thank you for being a man. God damn it. We are so grateful to have men on this planet. I freaking love men. And you know what? You guys need to know that. Oh, Anthony, you've had a rough day. Baby doll, I love you so much. And at the end of the day, I know sometimes life can kick the shit out of us. I have been getting the shit kicked out of me as well. But you know what? At the end of the day, Babe, and I've posted this before, we can just, whew, we can always come back home and there's love inside of here. You can watch my videos in every video. I always try to tell you that you are loved because we need to know that now more than ever. So this was another good question that someone sent in to me. And he basically said this, he said, how do I redeem myself when I've screwed up for and needy? Um, it's, have you ever felt clean gear and needy? I for sure have. Like when I've gone through, um, says my connection is unstable. What? Is it still going? Because it says at my table. If you can just say, I can still hear you, that will, let, oh, and it's back. Okay. Sorry. It said my connection was unstable. Um, listen, when you've been clingy or needy with a woman, uh, the thing that I would first encourage you with is to connect back to yourself. What do I mean by that? Typically, when we feel like we need some, it's because we're ourselves. Point blank, it's what it boils down to. If if I am, um, if I'm feeling like, oh, this person has to do something for me, that is always a telltale sign to me. Oh, my connection is lagging. I'm on internet. Quit playing with me, internet. This is not a game. Still says it's connecting. Says it's connecting. Oh, and we're back. I don't know. My internet is for whatever reason cutting out. Um, but yes, whenever I'm being needy, it's, it's on something to myself. And I'm like, wait a minute, Erica, why does this person need that need to give that to me? Why can I not give that to myself? So let's say like, if you're a man, you're like getting clingy with your woman. You're like, I need her to verbally affirm me. Then baby, get your ass in front of a mirror and start affirming yourself. Do you know how many times I get in front of my mirror and I say, Erica, I Oh, I love you so much, baby girl. You're so strong. You're so powerful. You're so beautiful. You're so courageous. I love the way that you love people. Oh, you're so beautiful, my girl. If I need other people to do that for me, then that means I am not getting in front of the mirror and doing that enough to myself. Even with touch, if you feel like you're not, 
you're wanting this person to touch you all the time. How often are you touching yourself? I'm constantly, oh, hugging on myself, oh, loving on myself. Because you know what? These are things that you can do for yourself. So first and foremost, if you've screwed up and you have been over clingy, then I would say pull back and start giving back to you. Fill yourself up. So that means going and doing your hobbies that you enjoy. That means spending time with other friends who value you, who champion you, who celebrate you. Be around those people. Be built up by them. And then go and just freaking address it with her. I'm a big, big believer of communication. And listen, tell her, say, listen, there was a, a place in our relationship where I was getting a bit clingy with you. I was getting a bit needy with you. And I really want to apologize for that because, you know, that's really my job. That is my responsibility to love myself. And I gave you too much of that. And you know what? I want to open a door for you so that if you ever feel like I'm doing that again, that you can speak into my life and say, "Hun, you're depending on me again. And you have all this inside of you. You're depending on me again. And, and I'm not comfortable with this. Open that invitation for her to be able to speak that back to you so that you guys have some boundaries in your relationship. And then from there, that's when you re-engage with the relationship of showing her where you feel powerful in yourself. So returning back to the things that make you feel confident. If it's setting dates up and saying, listen, we're doing this so that you feel more of the man or girl, come over here. We're having sex tonight. Like doing those things that make you feel powerful as opposed to feeling needy and clingy. Um, Tony says, dang, you are preaching to the choir here. You are so dead on. I'm so glad. Uh, MJ says, Erica is a really good dating coach for men. Thank you so much. Um, and Pistache has eloquently said, Erica, my God, you have a way with words. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, so here's another question. A guy asked about what are about signs, uh, of flaky women. And here's the thing. Let me just, this one is not a very hard one. When a woman is not text messaging you back, when she is dismissing dates with you, if you set a date and she doesn't show up or she's like, oh, I got busy. I got... If she is not showing any interest in you, if she is not meeting you halfway, then my love, I will say this, that she is occupying space in your life for someone who is excited to be with you, who is excited to go on these dates with you, who is looking forward to your text messages where they light her up, that there is someone out there who is waiting for that. And the longer you allow this flaky woman to stay in your life, she is taking residence where this other woman would fill her shoes in a moment. And so I would say, please do not get disheartened. And when you see a flaky woman, let her go, let her do it do her thing, bless her, send her on her way, let her find herself, whatever she needs. But do not continue pursuing someone who's not meeting you halfway, babe, if they're not responding to your text, if they're not initiating dates with you and saying, hey, let's go catch this movie. Hey, let's go grab a coffee. If they're not reaching out to you and saying, hey, how was your day? Did you have a good day at work? Like this goes both ways. Yes, you men, which I love you for this. You initiate things, you get things going. But at the end of the day, like as time progresses with her, she's going to have to meet you halfway. And if she's not doing that, then my love, please don't let this woman continue to take up space where a more grateful woman would be happy to fill her shoes in a heartbeat. I hope that helps you. Um, so, this is another one. Champion says, I love Erica. Champion, I love you, baby doll. I love you. Uh, someone says, Derek says, you are the perfect wing girl. You tell it straight up, straight out. Listen, I think that's the only way to be. Why beat around the bush? We don't have time to waste. We get this one life to live. We got to freaking live it. Art says, what I wrote to you was meant as encouragement. Thank you, Art. I appreciate that. And, um, okay, so let me go into this one. Someone asked, uh, um, 
what to do about a closed off, quiet, standoffish. How do you help them relax, open up and enjoy the moment? So this to me sounds like a bit of a rigid woman. Um, don't waste your time. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, we all, we all can get in ourselves. Show us a different way. So if you're really into this woman and she's closed off, quiet and standoffish, um, one thing I would encourage you to do is find out where her interests are. Is she into music? Does she love hearing the piano play? Is she into classical music? Is she into the outdoors? Is she into rock climbing? Is she into uh, vegan food? Find interests are and then create opportunities for you guys to mesh together involving her interests, but make it something that's very unique and different. And this might require some research on your part, but sometimes um, if, if someone is very shy and things like that, like if you can bring them into a unique experience that their interests and their passions, that makes them feel seen by you. Like, wow, this person really took the time to research and find this amazing event for us to go to. He must really see me. This guy must really get me. And then that makes a person feel safe, accepted, and wanted. And so when you do that, that begins to open them up. You know, you can do things like that. And then I'm a big believer. Now I'm a, I'm a high communicator and I'm also a bit, um, comment asking me to show me your boobs. One, they're little a boobies. Like, what are you expecting to see nipples? Like, why do you want to keep seeing my boobies? They're in my dress. Like why? Um, so when someone is that that shy, it's you want to create opportunity for them to to come out and and blossom. But like I always saying, I am a bit confrontational. I am communicative, not confrontational in a negative way, but just saying, listen, um, you seem very timid with me. Um, what is that about? Are you just innately shy, or do you not feel comfortable around me? I'm very curious. So as opposed to accuse, accusing them. Tell them what you're observing. Have a conversation about it and just say, listen, I, I, I don't know if it's, it's just how you are. I'm getting to know you, which I'm in, enjoying, but please let me know. Like I'm open to have conversation around that. I, I honestly believe that nine out of 10 times things just, there just needs to be, it's just a conversation. A conversation needs to be had. So do those two things. Bring her to an event that that meshes in with her interests so that the two of you guys can connect and she can feel seen and safe by you, but also have a conversation around it as well. Erica, you are Italian like me. You're so beautiful. Uh, Joe says, I just want to say all we need as people is love. Boy, isn't that the truth? Don't stop loving just because she stopped loving your life is love in many forms. Erica, marry me, please. <laughs> How big's the diamond? I'm teasing. Thank you so much. Um, so here is, this is the one that I'm actually really looking forward to tackling. And I actually, I will tell you a secret about me. There are, there are two things I really love talking about. I know I do a lot of stuff on dating, but I'm going to tell you a secret. What I really love talking about our relationships. And, and when I talk about relationships, I mean like communication, vulnerability, inner healing, like that's the stuff I love to talk about. I love to talk about relationships and, and vulnerability. And obviously you guys know, I like to talk about sex. So this is the one that I thought was so great. This is probably one of my favorite questions because of how he ended it. This was awesome. This guy wrote to me, and I'm sorry, sweetheart, I don't remember your name, so I, I'm hoping you watch this, but you, you asked this question in our community, and you said this, um, you said, how do I take control when I'm, in a, when I'm in a relationship that it's narcissistic, borderline, or bipolar personality? And you said, our relationship is dysfunctional. But hey, at least I'm willing to admit it. And that made me just chuckle inside because it's so real. And if you haven't noticed, I'm definitely all about keeping it real. That's why I'm not a coach. It just sits there and just 
tells you what to do. And I'm like, come on, man, we're all human beings. We're messed up. We're flawed. Let's just keep it real with each other. Um, that's my take in terms of giving advice. It's just keeping it real, sharing real stories and not me talking at you. I'm talking with you. I'm your guide. I'm not some fucking know-it-all. Come on, whatever. Um, so that it chuckled. I chuckled because this guy was so transparent in the fact that he's like, listen, I know my relationship is dysfunctional, but I'm not afraid to admit it. And I just love that. And so listen, obviously, if you're in this relationship, and it is dysfunctional, I would say that if you ever search for this on YouTube, most of the time people are going to tell you that you should leave, right? I mean, that is where most ad advice is, is just leave, 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 leave. I'm like, well, shit, we're all going to be pretty lonely if we're all just leaving all the time. But I will say this, that if you are in this situation that, and you both are either bipolar or narcissistic or borderline personality, um, that one, you're always responsible for yourself. Despite what your partner does, this is a hard lesson for us human beings to learn. Let me, I'm not even gonna make it about humans. This has been a hard lesson for me to learn as a firstborn Latina French, strong willed Leo woman. This has been one of the hardest lessons, and sometimes I still have to relearn this lesson. But I cannot control the world. I think I know better. I would love to do it, but I can't. There's one person, there's one person I get to control. One person. And that person is this girl right here, Erica Angelo. I get to control her. So when we're in relationships and dysfunction is there, innately, what do we want to be the other person? We want to say, you need to change this. You need to do this. You need to do that. That's not how it works. My love, you get to be responsible for you. So if you have some of these issues, what I would encourage you is, I don't know if you're on medication or not, but I would encourage you, are you seeing a therapist? Are you reading books on self-help? Listen, I have been obsessed with self-help and healing myself and all of that. For as long as I can remember, I think it's the most beautiful, empowering thing that I can do is to heal myself and find and discover new ways to love myself more. And so I want to I want to encourage you that are you being proactive in your own healing by taking your medication, by seeing a therapist, by reading books, by doing yoga? Are what are you doing? to heal you. And a lot of times, as I said, in relationships, we always want to make it about our partner. Why? Because it's easier to face other people and correct on what they're doing wrong, as opposed to looking in a mirror and going, wow, you really blew that. That was really off. Wow, you need to go and offer forgiveness for that. So that's the first and foremost thing is I would say, be responsible for yourself. Kim says, I read self-help books all the time because I think it keeps you more centered. Kim, this is why you're my sister from another mister. Me too, girl. I am like addicted. Give me any article. Give me a book. I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. I can grow. I can love myself. I can belong to me more. Beautiful, brilliant. And so first and foremost, be responsible for yourself. Second thing is your partner also has to do the same. It takes two to tango. So your partner definitely has to be seeking therapy, working on healing. You have to have both people showing up in the relationship. So first and foremost, being responsible for one another. Boom, done. Here's the other thing. Typically when we have uh, emotional issues, like I've shared my story where I have struggled with anxiety and PTSD and things like that. And a lot of times those things were very much in our head. We're just like very head centered like, uh, and thoughts are just running nonstop. So what I would encourage you with is for the two of you to start doing activities that ground you. What do I mean? Going for walks on the beach. That is a very grounding thing, being around nature. Um, 
walking on the grass barefoot, very grounding, doing yoga together, very grounding, very healing. So being responsible for yourselves and then grounding. Grounding is such a, a beautiful subject. I, I have a friend that I actually want to interview here um, and talk about grounding because I would say that most of us as human beings nowadays are not grounded. You know why? Because we're doing this. What's the next YouTube video I can watch? Who's the next person on Instagram? I can, and, and we're not even cognizant of our breathing or anything like that because we're just so outside of ourselves. So I would say you have to ground and you have to be responsible for yourself. And the third thing is learning healthy communication. Healthy in communication. Communication is everything. That's another thing. I love so many I, I would love to do some more videos about communication because it's so complex and it's such a, a tough topic, but it's what saves the relationship. It's what saves yourself, the conversations that you're having with yourself and the conversations that you're having with your partner. So those three things, be responsible for yourself and your own self-care by seeing a therapist, seeing a, seeing a psychiatrist, whoever you need to see grounding and also supplements. I'm a big, 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 big person on, on, um, taking supplements. Like, uh, for me, magnesium, I love it. Five HTP, love it. So taking those supplements and grounding ground. I do, there are meditations on YouTube that you can find. Uh, there's a beautiful Vipassana, uh, meditation on YouTube. That's free. I would encourage you to do that grounding, going for walks on the beach, being with nature and doing activities that help you to connect through grounding like yoga. So you guys, these were some amazing, amazing questions. And I want to thank you guys again for, for being here and honestly, just for being a part of this community. I cannot thank you enough. And I have to say, you know, I, I don't take this lightly. Everything that I do with you guys is with intention of loving you and making you feel championed and seen for the beautiful divine masculine man that you are. So I hope that when you come to my channel that you don't feel beaten down and like it's one more thing you have to learn, but that you feel championed, that you feel loved, that you feel inspired and that you feel respected. I know for, for men, it's respect is a very big thing. And so I want you to feel respected. There's some weird guy putting some weird stuff, man. I tell you, sometimes the beauty of, of YouTube is you have like, like, like 95% of people who say the most interesting things in the comments. And then sometimes you just get these crazy people and you're just like, Oh my God, baby, you need a big fat hug. Uh-huh. You need me to squeeze the shit out of you. Don't you baby doll? So what do I want you to know today? I want you to know that you have what it takes. I believe that that is what every man needs to know is that he has what it takes. And that is from John Eldridge, who is one of my favorite authors. And that's why I always tell you guys at the end of my videos, you have what it takes. But he says that as a man, a man's deep longing is he needs to know that he has what it takes. And so I'm always encouraging you guys that you do have what it takes. I'm just your guide. I'm just the woman who goes, I'm like a treasure hunter. I just go digging for the treasure that's already inside of you and going, hey, dig right here. It's right here. You have what it takes here. This is, you have the tools. I'm just bringing them out in you. But most importantly, that you're loved. I came to this epiphany many years ago when I was going through a very difficult time in my life. And um, I will just tell you, my I have a baby sister. This happened in 2010. I get the dates messed up. I think it was 2010. And I get this terrible call that my baby sister was hit by a drunk driver and 7.30 in the morning. And it changed my life. And I flew to Texas and I just thought, oh my gosh, like, it's going to be bad, but not that bad. And I walked in and I saw my sister covered in tubes and she looked like a football player because she'd had so many surgeries and my world in that moment fell apart. And I'll never forget 
I was sleeping on my parents' couch and I woke up the next morning and I went, Jesus Christ, that was the worst fucking nightmare ever. And I, and I went, oh my God, that was not a nightmare. That, that happened. That really happened. And, um, oh, sorry, I get emotional. So this happened in 2008. And, you know, just to let you know, to this day, my sister still lives in a nursing home and we haven't heard her talk or seen her walk. Um, she's very conscious and she's there. But um, yeah, it's been a very hard thing for our family. Very, very hard. Oh. And so when I say to you that you're loved, when I went back to my community after my sister's accident, and I was living in Northern California, and I had tons of friends there, and I just remember my friends coming around and loving me and going on hikes with me and going to breakfast with me. Mm, makes me so emotional. And I remember just feeling so loved. And I, I remember saying, because I am loved, I am unstoppable. I am powerful. Nobody can stop me because I am loved. And so that's why when I finish my videos and I tell you at the end of those videos, those two things that you have what it takes is because I know every man that is the message his heart needs to hear is that he has what it takes. And when I finish saying you are loved, it's because when you truly know that you're loved, you do feel unstoppable. You feel like you've won at life. And that's what I want to impart into you guys is that you are loved and that you matter. And thank you guys for your sweet words, what you're saying about my sister. Her name is Sarah. If you are of the praying kind, we have been uh, hoping for a miracle for my sister for a very long time. So if you do believe in God and you do believe in prayers, please pray for Sarah. Uh, we always ask people to pray for Sarah. And that is my sister. And um, she's probably one of the most important people in my life. So if you think of Sarah and you think of me, please uh, send out a prayer for, um, for, for a miracle for her. But I love you guys. And I want you to feel love because you deserve that. That is a, a human necessity. And so I want you to feel loved. So right now, I just want everyone to take in a very deep breath. And one more. And we just, as you take in a deep breath on your own, I just deposit and I release love into your life right now and that you matter and that you're perfect just as you are and that you have what it takes. I love you guys so much. Thank you for praying for my sister. I love you all and thank you for being a part of this community of 35,000, now 36,000. I'm so honored. I don't take it lightly. I love you very, very much and I'm here to champion your heart. Thank you. Thank you for entrusting me. I will see you guys soon. You take care.